What is up guys and welcome back to the Concrete Edge right here on Deco Creek TV. My name's Jeff and on today's show we're going to go over all the specialty tools that you're going to need for concrete overlays so stay tuned and you're going to learn all about it. So before we get started with today's video, I just wanna give a real quick shout out to Tony Ronaldo of T. Ronaldo Concrete. Uh, he is launching a YouTube channel uh, within the next week or two here. So go find his channel on YouTube, T. Ronaldo Concrete. Hit the subscribe button. You can find him on Facebook. Man, he is doing so much cool stuff right now. And Tony, man, we love all your support. Keep it up, man. So concrete overlays have been around for a long time, but I gotta tell you, I meet a lot of contractors uh, who have been pouring decorative concrete their whole life and they still haven't got into overlays yet. And you know, this can be for a few different reasons. I mean, some people are just too busy pouring full depth concrete and they just don't have time, you know, to experiment with something new. Others may actually have a misconception that concrete overlays don't hold up long term. And I can tell you that that is all definitely not true. Uh, but the most common answer we get to this is that people just don't know where to start. Now, we already have quite a few videos on concrete overlays on our channel. I mean, in fact, we have an entire playlist dedicated to concrete overlays. So just make sure you go check that out as well, because this video here is just really all about the tools that it's going to take to get started. Now, before we get into the tools, I do want to mention one thing real quick. Uh, different types of overlays are going to require different tools. I mean, you know, stample overlay is meant to be stamped and that's pretty much it. And then trial mixes or micro toppings, they are for pretty much everything else. And so some of these things are going to cross over between the two. Some are going to be specific to just one certain application. So my point is that, you know, you're not going to need everything on this table if all you're trying to do is create wood grain textures, for example. So first up is going to be a mixer and you know it is going to depend on you know what type of overlay you're doing as far as how crazy you need to get with this mixer but at very least no matter what kind of overlay that you're mixing up you are definitely going to need something more than just a cordless drill and a little mixing paddle and honestly just an old school mason mortar mixer works great for this um, and you know you're going to have to adjust this to whatever's working best for you but at very least you're going to need something heavy duty for any kind of an overlay. So next up is gonna be a gauge rake, and this is definitely just specific to, to stampable overlays. You're not gonna use this for you know micro toppings or anything like that. Now, I prefer a gauge rake like this one here from Midwest Rake because it's got these little cams. All we gotta do is just make sure we have the right cam on for that day for how thick we're putting it down, and we really can't mess it up from there. And this is really, really important because trying to put, just put down stampable overlay just with a trowel and guess the thickness, I can tell you that is not gonna work out well. You're gonna have thick spots, thin spots, it's not going to set uh, consistently. You're not going to get even texture. And so just don't even try that. Just use a gauge rake. So another thing is going to be a magic trowel. And this is something that you probably won't use for stampable overlays, but any kind of a micro topping trowel overlays, this is pretty much a required tool. And there are a lot of different brands out there, but you know, we've always just stuck to the actual magic trowel brand. So next up is going to be just some concrete finishing tools. And I mean, you don't need your entire tool trailer for this, but you're definitely going to need a finished trowel, an edger, a margin trowel, just some of those basic things. You definitely don't need anything magnesium for this. This is going to just be all steel trowels, uh, but that is something you're going to need, you know, whether you're doing stample, whether it's micro toppings, steel trowels, edgers, always a good idea. So above and beyond that, uh, some sort of a blade smoother or a funny trowel is gonna be required for stampable overlays only. And you know, when you pull that gauge rake uh, through your stampable overlay, it's gonna leave these little lines behind and you've gotta close those lines up and smooth off the surface just a little bit. And you know, the easiest way to do that is uh, something on a pole. So blade smoother, funny trowel, again, lots of different options there, no right or wrong, just find the one that works best for you. And in order to do that, we're gonna need some spike shoes. You know, if we're gonna go out there with a smoother trowel our edges, we're gonna have to be walking in the overlay. And again, this is for all different kinds of overlays. You would never wanna leave your spike shoes at home. That is a required tool. So now on to some texturing and finishing options for overlays. And the first one is gonna be just a set of concrete stamps. And again, this is uh, strictly for stampable overlays, but you know, any of them concrete stamps that you guys use to stamp full depth concrete, you can use those on stampable overlays as well as just texture skins. There's a ton of different options. Now, aside from stamped overlays, uh, you know, micro toppings, trial mixes, we can texture those as well. We're just not gonna be able to use those skins or concrete stamps. And in this case, uh, we could use trials. You can make a lot of really, really cool 
cable textures with steel trials. Uh, and you know, again, find the one that works best for you. But if I could give you a starting point, it would be a pool trial. In fact, you know, these two here are my favorite ones. And I also want to just point this out real quick, that this is a true pool trial. This is not just a round end finishing trial. And the difference is the length of the shank. If you look at this round end finish trial, which looks like a pool trial, but the shank comes all the way out, all the way to the end, and it doesn't have enough flex there to do what we want to do to create that texture. So just make sure it's an actual short shank pool trial. Brushes are also really popular for texturing thin overlays, especially for wood grain textures. And, you know, again, there's no certain uh, right or wrong here. Most people, you know, I personally like to just use that trowel to create wood grain. But if you're into brushes, I would just try a ton of different things. These are just a few examples of some ones that we know work really, really well. Now, aside from creating uh, that sort of texture, if you're going to try to broom your overlay, which is actually really common, that's actually probably one of our biggest sellers of our trial mix, is that people are just wanting to resurface front porches, driveways, back patios, all that stuff. And, you know, we're just going to need a normal concrete finishing broom for that. Although I prefer one that is two to maybe three feet in length, you start getting a four foot uh, finishing broom, it can just really be hard to keep up with the overlay uh, before it's, it's too late. So just the finishing broom, ideally one that's a little bit shorter. So another texturing option when it comes to those thin overlays is going to be a hopper gun. And man, I got to tell you, this is one of my favorite ways to use uh, these overlays is to spray it out of a hopper gun. Uh, just like this one right here. We don't need anything special. Uh, again, we're spraying concrete overlay through this. It's going to take a toll on it. But this one right here is my absolute favorite one. This one here from Bond Tools. So now just on to a few accessories, things that aren't necessarily required tools, depending on what you're doing. They're just really, really nice to have. And the first one is going to be grout tape. And this comes in a variety of different uh, widths. And this is just a way to make a quick tile pattern, stone pattern, wood grain pattern, whatever you're gonna do, trying to create grout lines into thin overlays grout tape is just an awesome way of going about it now above and beyond that if you're, all you're doing is doing wood grain patterns i also like these little carbide cutting tools this is just actually made to cut tile i believe and you know this is something that you could actually do your entire overlay put down your wood grain and then come back the next day and score it with this carbide tool and so it just creates a different look it's another option uh, other than grout tape Another thing that's great to have, especially on stamped overlays, is some weather stripping. And this is great for creating borders. In fact, I just if, if you're going to create a border on stamped overlay, I wouldn't uh, go about it any other way. Now, we do have a full video on this technique, so just please check that out. And Jason goes over the entire thing. Another thing that weather stripping is great for is putting it up against your house or whatever your, you know, your overlay is going up against. Instead of trying to cut down a little piece of expansion joint, just take that same weather stripping, stick it right against whatever you're going up against, and now you've got a nice isolation layer. Uh, that way the concrete can freeze up in the winter, settle back down in the spring, and you don't have to worry about it bonding to the house. So sometimes in colder weather, you're, you know, these overlays, they can be kind of slow. A lot of these, these mixes are designed for the summertime, and a great way to speed them up is to just use hot water and one of these little bucket heaters right right here will just solve that problem completely all you gotta do is drop it in your bucket of water uh, give it about 20 minutes and it's gonna be nice and warm so the the speed that concrete overlays are gonna set also has a lot to do with slab temperature and so one of these little infrared thermometers is just priceless when it comes to that because now you can actually you know shoot the temperature of your slab you know it's even way more than the ambient temperature that slab temperature is just everything and so whether it's too hot whether it's too cold at least now you know what's going on with that slab and you can adjust your mix accordingly so another thing that you're gonna have to have again you're mixing up overlays in a bucket or in some kind of mason mixer you're gonna have to measure water and so obviously we're gonna need some measuring containers and the biggest thing i would say is just make sure you have plenty on hand make sure you have ones that are big enough to me my biggest pet peeve is if you're making like five bags at a time and all you have is a little two quart mixing container and you got to continuously just dump that thing out over and over so get something a little bit bigger they also even make these buckets so that it's a five gallon pail and you can measure large amounts of water at a time now, above and beyond that, this is something that I've just started using in the last couple of years is this little water dosing unit from Color Mix. And I'll tell you what, this takes all the guesswork out of it. Now you don't even need measuring containers anymore. All you got to do is just set the amount of water you want right on this dosing unit, uh, hit the button and it does everything for you. Now, of course, there are other things that you're going to need to complete an entire job, you know, things like a power washer, a leaf blower, some abrasive tools. But my point is that you've got to start somewhere and all you really need for that is just a few bags of mix and some of these tools that we just went over. And that way you can get going, get to messing around and you guys are going to learn so much once you start doing something. 
Well, guys, that's pretty much it for today's show. Please leave us a comment if we missed anything or if you guys have any questions about concrete overlay tools. Also, don't forget about the Decorative Concrete Expo. It happens every single March. It is the coolest concrete show of the year. Click the link right down in the description. All the info is there. So from all of us here at DecoCrete TV, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.